Welcome back this week. Whale Watson's on the program with us. Uh, get ready to fight Brett Johns coming up here at Titan Fighting Championships 33. One of four title fights that's going to be on the card uh, that night. A huge night for Titan. Um, down in Mobile, Alabama. Or down in, uh, um, yeah, it's down in Mobile, Alabama. It's in Alabama. Yeah. Have you ever been to Alabama? Nope. So it's uh, going to be an interesting trip for me. Interesting how? I ain't never been to that part of the to the U.S. at all, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see how, how friendly they are over there. <laughs> are you – well, fuck it. Let's just cut to it. Are you worried about, about race down there? I mean, are you worried about white folks being, being southern? You know what I'm, saying? I mean, like, I'm not worried about anything. It's going to be interesting. You know, it's always interesting to – to learn and and to experience new things, you know, new culture yeah. shocks. But I will, I will, I'm not worried about nothing. Nah. I will tell you this: racism is real. And it oh, is it's still definitely alive. real. It's still alive. And oh, every day. But, but the South is more sensitive to it than a lot of other places. So what happens is, it's never to your face. You hardly ever know about it. You just kind of go as long as you're polite and respectful to every human being. Then every human being will be polite, and respectful back. And then they'll say something. They may, if they're going to say anything at all, they may say something about you behind your back, but it'll never be to your face. So it's, oh, it's, yeah, it's like it's kind of the same way around here, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> it's, uh, but yeah, it's for real. And, and I, I talked to a lot of guys, you know, of course, me being mixed, but looking white, it's a little bit easier for me to run down there. Uh, and when I go around the South, I kind of get a different vibe than, than even my, my I have, uh, a couple of my brothers are dark skinned black, and they have a totally different vibe down South than I do. I kind of just right, do whatever right. I want to do and kind of figure it out that it's just it's just going to be what it is. You can't change everybody's everybody's opinion. No, that's true. That's work. That's work. Does it make a difference how you're treated by the by the citizens down there when you step inside that cage with Brett Johns, who's not even from America? This guy's from he's a Welshman. He's from from uh, from the United Kingdom in, uh, from Welsh. I mean, I would hope that uh, you know, being the American, I would get the fans on my side, you know, but. Being, being from California and, and uh, being from San Diego especially, I'm used to be having the haters hate on me, yeah. so it won't make a difference at all to me going in there. And I apologize to Brett. I said uh, he's from Welsh. He's actually from Wales, and he's a Welshman. I apologize about that, Brett, for screwing up the name of your country. That's so small that even the uh, the people from uh, England make fun of you, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, uh, has there been – this is this is a common theme. I've interviewed a lot of the other guys that are on this card that are on the main event, and it's, they're all title fights. It's two hours worth of, worth of television time. Each fight can be about 30 minutes. Add in walk-ins and walk-outs and announcements and all that thing. It's, it's very potential to go over, over time. Lex McMahon has told me CBS Sports doesn't mind if they go over. It's already worked out that, the, that if it does run over, it's going to be okay. But do you feel an added pressure to finish Brett, to go out there and make a statement because it is on CBS Sports? This is going to be seen by 93 million people or potentially by 93 million people at home. Do you feel like a little bit more pressure to go out there and make a statement to put your foot down and say, look, I'm, I'm the guy. I am the guy at this weight class and you guys need to pay attention to me? I put that pressure on myself for every fight. You know, I want to go out there and if you look at my record, all my wins come by finish or I die trying. So I have no, no other intention than to go out there and finish bread as fast as I can and, and to make that statement in the 135 pound division. I'm the best guy in the world. Of your last uh, four fights, you're, you're 50%, you know, two and two. Um, Tom Nikamaki, right, was one of them. And then Almeida was the other one, other loss that you had. Yeah. Of those two losses, what was the submission, what was the decision? And like you said, you always try to make a statement and you either come home with your shield or on it. That's kind of your, your mentality. And it, it's a great way to, because then people want to see you fight. Because you're like, this guy, it's, it's either going to be a, he's either going to crush everybody that's in his path or it's going to be a battle trying to get him down. This is how it works. Of those two losses, which one was a tougher loss for you to take going back into training the week, week and a half after the fight? Uh, I mean, the Almeida fight was tough because I beat him. I Every round, I almost finished him. He, all he did was run away from me for three rounds, and he got a unanimous decision, went across the board, which is insane to me. I don't know how you win a fight like that. And then the Manaki fight, I made a mistake, and I got caught. And that, It's just what happens, you know, when – when you go for the kill, I was going for the kill. I went for a particular submission that I was working on, and he capitalized. He caught my arm first and finished me. So, you know, nothing but props to Demonaki, but Almeida, I wish I could have that fight back because that guy's walking around with a fake W. Does it – you you win this belt, and you beat Brett Johns. Does, does, that, does that loss in Almeida really make a difference anymore, or will it still bother you a little bit? Um – 
and in, in, in your back pocket a little bit, it'll bother me. You know what I mean? I being the champion is everything, and I know I'm gonna have a target on my back, and I'm gonna have to focus on that, and you know, and be ready for the next opponent coming at me. But you're always gonna have a little nip like that because you know that guy's walking around thinking he has a feather in his cap that he didn't really earn. Will, will you have a conversation with Lex McMahon after you have the bell around your waist and say, look, I'd, I'd like you to see the, you guys go get Rodrigo Almeida and bring him into the organization and, ha and build him up slow? Will you have that conversation? I wouldn't mind that, you know what I mean? I, I, like I said, I want to fight the best guys in the world. If he can fight his way up to me, let's do it. Right, and I'm not saying he comes in and gets first title offense. I'm saying, just like you said, he's got to come in at the position he's due, coming into the organization and work his way up to, to battle you. But I think that'd be a... I think that one would be another would be another great fight, another great fight on your cap, especially if you're the champ. And then you get to fight him as one of your title offenses after he's had a couple of fights in the organization to come through. Because then you get to put another big statement on, hey, he beat me before, I beat him now. This is what happened the first time. The judges were just retarded. Now here I am doing it again. The judges can actually see, and everyone home can see, this is how the fight should go. Yeah, but I'm going to finish him this time. Let, yeah, and see, that's the thing is that you are a finisher. You love going out and finishing fights, and that's your goal. You don't hang out and try to, oh, I'm winning this. We're going into the, you know, the middle of the third round. I'm decisively winning this. There's no doubt I'm winning this fight. I'll just cruise the last minute and a half, the last two minutes. You're still trying to find a way to finish. Brett Johns is a super tough fight. He's got great hands, great knockout power, very aggressive, very comfortable. He's, he's a very smart European fighter, has that, that traditional style of, of, of English boxing, but intelligent about how he comes after it. Have you, had to, have you had to put together a very extensive game plan for a guy like this, or was it very easy to get the game plan put together for him? Um, my coach has put, put together a very great game plan. I've been working with Tiger Smalls and Eddie Bravo and Bill Crawford and Nola Hernandez, and, you know, mostly, mainly a lot with Tiger Smalls, a seven-time champion, two-time world champion, and a boxing hall of fame, and the world's about to see some, some new things in my hands. I'm really excited about my hands for this fight, and... If Brett wants to stand up, I'm about to show the world some, some world-class boxing. Is it, uh, is it difficult to, to get new stuff into your repertoire? Like, is it difficult to pull something together and go, okay, this is what we're going to use. This is the new technique, the new submission, the new striking combination. Are you a guy that, that's, that you can learn something very, very quickly, or is it something that takes you a little bit of time to, to learn it and be able to use it concisely? I think with me, I'm, I'm so new in my in my fighting career so i'm only five and a half years in so i'm still learning a lot so i'm i'm not stuck in any old ways or any any old habits i'm still picking up so much new stuff and every camp i just get better and better and better you know, this is gonna be an interesting fight i gotta i gotta be honest with you i called one of brent's fights uh when he was uh uh in uh cage fighting championships back in 2013 um great competitor then he's gotten so much better but so have you every time that you fight like you said you're young in your fight career but every time you fight, you get better. Even in your losses, you see that, wow, he's improved in this position. He's improved his, his, uh, his, uh, uh, his rubber guard game with, with Eddie. You can tell that you are really diligent in learning the fight games. Does it, does it still interest you every day waking up to go, look, okay, here's another day I got I to gotta train? Like, or let me rephrase the question. During training camp, do you still have that same pleasure, that same passion to get up every day and train as you do when it's not training camp? Because I know training camps can be long and tedious and wear on you and you get tired and, and do you, do you, are you able to keep that mental status through the entire training camp? Um, I'm, I'm so like lucky that I don't, I don't know if it's because I'm still such a baby in my career or what it is, but I just, I love doing this. I do this. Even when I'm not in camp, I train minimum two times a day, sometimes three times a day. Still people are like, do you have a fight coming up? And I'm like, no, nah, I just want to learn. I just want to be in here training. I want to, I want to help this guy who's got a fight coming up, whoever's got a fight coming up. I'm, I'm in there sweating, sparring with everybody still. I, I'm, I'm 365 days to this. I, I really live and breathe this. And, and that's why I've been able to get so much better lately. That's well, Watson. Get ready to fight Brett Johns here in Titan Fighting Championships 33, CBS Sports on March 20th. Well, thanks so much for coming on here, man. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know that uh, you got some. You're watching TV right now. You got some other. You got some uh, uh, former teammates fighting that you're trying to watch. So I appreciate you putting on pause for a couple minutes to take some time with us. I appreciate you, man. All right, we'll talk again soon. All right, Louis, you're the legend. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you, man.